A Fox News alert and a blistering speech from presumptive Republican nominee Donald Trump. He just wrapped it up in Soho on the southern end of Manhattan. Mm -hmm. Among other things, he blamed Hillary Clinton and her time as Secretary of State for the rise of ISIS, said she lacks the temperament, the judgment, and the competence to lead. Welcome to Happening Now. I'm John Scott. And I'm Heather Noward in for Jenna Lee today. We've got a whole lot, John, to talk about we here do. on America's election headquarters, including that speech that Donald Trump just gave eviscerating Hillary Clinton, but also Hillary Clinton, what she is up to today. She's set to give one herself. North Carolina. Yeah. Let's get back to her rival speech. Kristen Soltis Anderson is a columnist at the Washington Examiner and a Republican pollster. Jessica Tarlov, a Democratic pollster and senior political strategist at Schoen Consulting. Our political panel takes apart Donald Trump's speech. Uh, Kristen, what did you think of it? I thought it was fascinating that we have now officially entered the I am rubber, you are glue election. Because <laughs> Donald Trump in this speech took every criticism that's been lobbed at him, that he's volcanic and impulsive, that he, that people got poor while he got rich. He's taken all of those things and he's turned them back on Hillary Clinton. Um, he had a lot of really good, I think, one-liners where he said things like, her campaign slogan is I'm with her, well, my slogan is I'm with you, um, and really took it to her in a way that didn't sound sound like, you know, he was joking. It didn't sound like sort of the more flippant tone that we've heard from Donald Trump. This may be a speech where he was trying to really pivot to being a quote unquote serious sounding candidate, perhaps to put at ease the concerns of some establishment Republicans who'd been getting pretty nervous about Donald Trump as we head toward the convention. Jessica, specifically that line, you know, the mm -hmm. I'm with her line, was that effective? Oh, totally. And I'm with her. And I thought it was effective. <laughs> I, I thought it was a really genius move. Um, I thought this was certainly by Donald Trump standards. Uh a remarkable speech, and he didn't change the tone of his voice the entire time. Um, so, yes, it was a little monotone, but I think that that's a great thing for him to be able to show that he has, uh, you know, a quasi-presidential side, because obviously there are issues with content there, and I was reading Twitter, and apparently fact-checkers are, you know, passing out from exhaustion. You know, he talks about what she did in Libya. He supported that. He talks about Iraq. He supported that. Uh, his comment about Benghazi, the uh, chief counsel to the Benghazi committee had said that he would have done nothing differently and that those, uh, those deaths couldn't have been prevented. So there are all sorts of things that Clinton's going to come back at, with, I think, in this speech this afternoon. But I thought it was very effective, and I, I agree with everything that Kristen said. All right. Uh, Kristen, uh, specifically when, when, I mean, the, the applause line that had everybody standing uh, in his room. Now, obviously, it was packed with, with <laughs> Trump supporters, right. but he said Hillary Clinton may be the most corrupt person ever to seek the presidency. In this election, we are going to have a kind of a race to the bottom, unfortunately, where you have both candidates that right now have very negative, uh, unfavorable numbers in the yeah. polls. But when you look at Hillary Clinton's polling, the biggest weakness she has is that people think that she's untrustworthy, and they don't necessarily know if she really is fighting for them, which has been a big theme she's tried to push since she launched her campaign last year. So if he can make the case that, look, I may be somebody who's not perfect, I may be somebody who's made a lot of money, I may be somebody who doesn't doesn't look or act like a traditional candidate, but hey, at least I'm fighting for you while Hillary Clinton is just fighting for herself. That line of attack does play in pretty strongly to where Hillary Clinton's vulnerabilities are when you poll people about what they think. Jessica, give us your take on his appeal to, say, inner city African Americans and Hispanics. He said Zero. that, you know. You, you don't think it worked? <laughs> no, I don't. I mean, certainly I don't think that him standing up there and saying, you know, Hillary Clinton's not good for the African-American community, the Hispanic community, the LGBT community, when she's overwhelmingly popular with them. He has 90% disapproval or unfavorable with the, with the black and Hispanic community, and not as high with the gay community. But, you know, he can say these things, but it doesn't make them true. And when people go to the polls, they know what they're voting for, and they know who stood with these communities throughout their careers. Yes, he can talk about, you know, her comment about super predators and things like that, but I, I don't think that that's what's going to win him this election, and I don't think he's going to be winning over minority voters. It's I imagine, not going to happen. I imagine tongues are wagging, at least <laughs> among those who saw the speech. Uh, it was a big one, and as I said, it she was. will answer about three hours from now. It's a really fun day. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Gives us plenty to talk about. Jessica Tarlow, Kristen Soltis-Anderson, thank you both. Thanks, John.